Lex Africa is an alliance of African law firms. It was the first ever African legal alliance formed in 1993, and we're the largest uh, legal alliance. Worksman's was a founding member and is the administrator of the alliance. We now have over 600 lawyers in 21 African countries, and we're always looking for growth. Ultimately, we want to be represented in all 54 countries. Um, 2014, um, with Worksman's, we were on a trip to New York, meeting with potential investors in Africa. And, um, most people were kind of dis disinterested. You know, a lot of people said what Peter said, that, you know, we're not really interested in that country. And then we had to say that it wasn't a country. Um, but but the, one, the one discussion we had that sort of left a mark with, uh, on us was one of the lawyers said to us, we don't really want to be in Africa, but we have to be. And um, so I guess we need to speak to you and learn, learn about Africa. So that's kind of, you know, 2011 to today, there seems to have been a big change. But I think part of the difficulty we have is assuming that everything is happening in the rest of the world or across Africa in the same way. And so I think the advantage that we have here today is having you gentlemen, especially Antonia representing the broad industry, to talk to us about some of the, the, the sort of on the ground changes. So um, perhaps starting with you, Stanford, if you could give us a, a flavor of private equity in Zimbabwe, you know, what's the sort of size of the industry and um, where do the investors come from? What sort of things are happening in Zimbabwe in private equity? So what I would say is that uh, Zimbabwe has enormous opportunities as far as private equity is concerned. The opportunities have not really been pursued to the extent that they should and uh, they are in various sectors from infrastructure, gold mining, uh, fast-moving consumer goods, uh, and, uh, and even industrial revival, because our industries are broken at the moment, they require retooling. So there's huge uh, opportunity in that area. Um, one of the things that I, sort of towards closing, wanted to chat to you about is what we can do more to to increase private equity investments in these countries. Um, and perhaps just while well, you've still got the mic, Tanya, um, you guys have been very successful as an industry. And what are the kinds of things that you found have worked um, to boost the industry generally? What we've done is, through our research, through our conferences, through training, through networks, through relationships building, through attending international conferences, We've raised the profile of the asset class as well as of the region in terms of an investment destination. Some of the things we are going to embark on this year is um, immersions for international LPs to come to South Africa and experience life on the ground. So to demystify some of those perceptions about the risk and the potential risk of the country itself, engage with our GPs, engage with portfolio companies that have received investment so they can see the impact that it's made. Um, we're also going to uh, focus more on education educating capital seekers, especially family businesses, in terms of looking at private equity as, as an option in terms of, um, of equity stakes going forward. Um, and then we'll continue with our research, um, our media releases, using each and every opportunity to educate people about the asset class. It seems though that there's now, as a result of those of those sort of successes, there's more competition for these assets in, in Africa, and and that that is coupled with um, fewer and fewer uh, capable people, or people who have the skills to manage private equity assets, being out there. So there's kind of competition on, on both fronts. Now, how do you think we 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 navigate that going forward? It, it does seem to us to be a challenge. And I think, you know, just to give one example. Um, you may have read what's happening in Botswana at the moment with a pension fund uh, who's invested a massive amount of money into private equity but obviously didn't have much capacity to, to monitor what was going on there. Um, also in Namibia, who took our Reg 28, which you all know about, basically a, a, an idea to incentivize private equity investment. But instead of allowing pension funds to invest into private equity, what they did in Namibia is that they forced pension funds to invest in private equity, which of course created a whole bunch of people who were experts overnight. Um, is this, this sort of crunch of a lack of resources and competition for assets a, a problem uh, going forward? The competition is there in Nigeria, and I think you have um, 
a good number of companies that uh, are manned by highly skilled professionals. One of such is the African Capital Alliance Company, headed by a gentleman called uh, Dick Kramer. He's been in Nigeria, an American, he's been in Nigeria for about 30 years. Um, he's very good and um, they, they pioneered a good number of uh, deals in Nigeria. And uh, another good thing about the company is that um, they have professionals from other parts of the world, you know, working there with them. You know, so their standards are very high and uh, they apply best, you know, best practices. In, in terms of companies, you don't have too many of the companies in Nigeria. You know, but the ones that are there doing well, structuring the good deals, they have very capable hands. And, uh, I mean, people who know exactly what to do, um, the issues to look for in a company, uh, when they are conducting their due diligence, whether, I mean, they should invest or not. So, I mean, the hands are there, the skills are there, you know, but going forward, I believe you have more companies and uh, more expertise. But the mere fact that you have other international companies coming in to invest in Nigeria, you know, it means that um, you know the standards are, are very high. You know, so um, it's just a, a matter of time. You know, when you get increase the volume, and uh, but you have the expertise. For instance, uh, our current uh, Minister for Trade and Investment, Dr. Enemala. Uh, is one of the dog, one of the directors of the African mm -hmm. Capital Alliance, and he's been in that business for a very long time. He worked in South Africa for some time, and I think he was in, in England or or the States. You know, so it's not an all commerce uh, industry or, or sector. You know, but those who are there um, who also know what to do. They are doing it very well and and successfully. Mm -hmm. Thank you very very much for your time. Tanya, we have a little gift for you since these are my two colleagues, so we, we're not giving them gifts quite yet. Thank you but very thank much. Thank you very much. Just for not being a lawyer. <laughs> That's for not being a lawyer. Enduring the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Enduring the lawyer. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.